Okay, so let's talk about what happens when atoms bond in terms of their overlap. So when we think about covalent bonds, we um, they form by sharing electrons of adjacent atoms. So here we, we've seen this diagram where the hydrogen atoms come together, and as they do, they reach this point um, of lowest energy where they overlap, and we say the electrons are electron pairs are there. We can also look at an overlap if I have an S orbital with a P orbital, and then they, they overlap, do this head-to-head -head overlap, and I have um, electron pairs, right? So chlorine would do the same thing with two P orbitals. Okay. So this is the diagram I was talking about. We Bonding occurs when I have the lowest potential energy is I bring these electrons together, these atoms, hydrogen atoms together, um, the energy goes down as they form this pair. And if I get too close, then I start to have the nucleuses too close together and they repel each other, right? Okay. Um, but it becomes difficult to imagine if I have a tetrahedron how this overlapping occurs. It's not necessarily this head-to-head -head overlap, right? So if I have three P orbitals, you know, I can imagine this, you know, and this coming together. But what happens with these guys? So let's think about methane. Methane is CH4, and it's a uh, symmetrical molecule. There are four electron domains around it. So the question is, are all those bonds the same? And you may say, yeah, sure they are, but let's think about where those electrons around the carbon come from. There are four valence electrons. Two of them are S electrons, and two of them are P electrons. Now, if in fact I have S and P electrons, wouldn't the something about these bonds be different? An S type and a P type that, that combines with the S from the hydrogen. And in fact, these are all the same. And so in order to explain why they're all the same, why they're all the same shape, the same thing happening, we use this concept called hybridization. And hybridization is where atomic orbitals on the central atom mix to form new hybrid or mixed orbitals. Okay? I'm going to take a look at what that means. So these hybrid orbitals are different than the original orbitals. So if I started with an S and a P, when this S and P come together, I'm a terrible artist, aren't I? They are no longer an S and a P orbital. And they are um, all equal. So if I think about the methane, and it's got hydrogens, right? And I'm talking about these bonds here. And even though two of these were S orbitals and two were P from the central carbon, what we're saying, in fact, these are all the same. And I'm not going to call them S and I'm not going to call them P. I'm going to call them SP3s. Okay? So I no longer am calling them S, I'm not calling them P's, but instead I'm saying I have four equal orbitals around the central atom, and I'm calling them SP3. And it turns out this number four, if I have four bonds around the central atom, I want the superscripts here to add up to four. So I've got S is one, P is three, so this adds up to four. So I have four SP3 orbitals. Let's take a look at what that means. Um, now, these orbitals, these sp3 orbitals, are higher in energy than the s orbitals, but lower in energy than the p orbitals. All right, so if I just think about beryllium, in its ground state, it wouldn't be able to form any bonds because it doesn't have any singly occupied orbitals, right? So I've got a pair here and a pair here. So what's gonna, where's the pair gonna be when I uh, when it bonds? And what hybridization says is what happens is one of these S electrons gets promoted to a P, okay? And now it has two 
singly occupied orbitals and can form two bonds. So the mix of the S and the P orbital yields um, two, kind of a strange word, degenerate, degenerate orbitals that are considered hybrids of the two. So that I have an S orbital and a P orbital, and when they, when I form a hybrid, it, it becomes this strange shape that's got this small piece and this large piece. Okay? And if I have these two together, I've got two SP orbitals. So where I had one S and one, one P, now I have an SP hybrid orbital. So they align themselves 180 apart, so here's beryllium, it's got an sp orbital, an sp orbital, and it can bond with two atoms. So this is consistent with the observed geometry of beryllium, it's a linear shape. So the um, hybrid orbitals for beryllium when it's bonding um, look like this. We don't call them S, we don't call them P, but the bonding orbitals are now these SP. Okay, Higher in energy than the S, lower in energy than the, the 2P. Now boron, which has three valence electrons, I can do a similar kind of thing, right? I have one P electron for bonding, but I can promote this S electron to be a P. Now I have three potential bonding, and rather than having, calling them S and P, because in fact they're all the same, they're SP2 hybridized orbitals, three places where they can bond. And again, three valence electrons is going to form three bonds, and I have one, one S, two P here, so it's one, two, three has to add up to the three, the number of valence electrons. Okay, so I end up with three sp2 orbitals, right? And those sp2 orbitals uh, align like this, consistent with a trigonal planar shape. All right, so if we look at carbon, whoops, carbon, you'd look at this and say it has a 2s, two, two 2s's and two single 2p's, but in fact we know carbon forms bonds with four atoms around it, so one of these s's must have been promoted, and rather than calling s and p, we call it, we have now four sp3 orbitals. This number has to be the sum of this three plus this one, which is four. So this is what we end up with, right? We end up with four sp3 orbitals. Okay, so if we have expanded octet, now we must use d orbitals, right? So I can't have, I can't go any higher than sp3, so if I have five places around the central atom, that's being bonded, I need to add a d orbital. And of course, if I have eight, I mean, if I have six places around the central atom, I'm going to have to have a sp3 d2, because I need two, five, and one is six. Okay? So these superscripts, again, need to add up to the number of bonding pairs around that central atom. So for the trigonal pyramidal with 5, we get sp3d, and for octahedron, we get sp3d2. Okay, so here's the shapes, here's some examples.